Welcome back to 4-Wheel Drive Adventure Crew. My name is Voss, and today I would like to present to you guys my brother's 1997 Jeep Cherokee XJ, and it's a manual Jeep. So those are kind of rare nowadays. There's uh, quite a bit uh, more automatics than manual Jeeps, but this one's not your ordinary manual Jeep. This thing's been modified since 2016. We've been changing things on it all the time. First, it is a Jeep that is sitting currently on the 37 inch tires, B of Goodrich KO2s. We run KO2s in our group because we do a lot of snow wheeling and this is kind of the best tire that we've been trying out on these uh, light vehicles. They really work really good. On the heaviers, they don't work as well. So, and it is sitting on 17 inch method bead grip rims. Bead grips are pretty good. They're a lot lightweight compared to a bead locks like I have, especially metal bead locks. And they do exact same job. They protect you from popping the bead off in the snow when you're deflating it into single digits. This Jeep is equipped with the uh, 4.6 stroker engine. Uh, it was built in-house by me with the uh, random parts from a 4.2. I had it all machined at the uh, local machine shop and they got it down with specs. And it been running for two years without any issues, zero oil consumption, zero overheating. This thing runs amazing and it has plenty of power. The only downside is it is a higher compression ratio. It's a nine to five compression ratio. So it needs to run on 91 octane in order to not have uh, the knocking sound from uh, early detonation. So, but it is a great vehicle overall. It does have a six speed transmission out of a TJ, the NV, I, think, I believe it's a 3070 uh, transmission. Don't quote me on that. I don't, I'm not an expert in manual Jeeps, but I did put most of this stuff uh, for my brother and uh, a lot with his help. He moved to Washington and uh, took his Jeep with him for uh, a year or so. And then he figured out that he's not doing the much wheeling over there. So what he does is he leaves the Jeep with me here. And then when uh, we do any big trips, he buys a ticket, flies over here, rides his Jeep, puts it back away and goes back home to work and comes back a few months, you know, every few months uh, to, to do all these adventures that we do here. So I've been uh, doing all the maintenance and upkeep on, on this Jeep form. And we did some upgrades for him. We put in a, a Jeep TJ uh, transfer case, 4 to one transfer case. And uh, with, paired with the six-speed manual, this thing is very good. He had that set up for a few years. And this year alone, we put in some JK axles under it that are very equipped with 513 gears and some RCV shafts in the front. The rears, I believe, are stock or chromoly. I don't remember exactly at the moment. But basically, with 37-inch tires and configuration he has with the manual Jeep, with the low, low transfer case, uh, you know, big tires, he's not going to break it anywhere. So it's uh, ready for all the heavy trails we can throw at it right now without going into one tons and 40s because this platform works. 37 inch tires on the Jeep Cherokees, they work because the wheelbase is not uh, very big. It's only about 102 inches. So very good for our areas here in uh, Northern California. So this Jeep, ever since we got it back in like 2016, we found this uh, Air B bumper that was made already for a Jeep Cherokee. Somebody was selling it for dirt cheap and it's been on here for years. And uh, it does hide your winch in there. And all it is is a 9K uh, old uh, Harbor Freight uh, Badlands winch in there. And it's been in there for what, five, six years now. We haven't done anything to it except we changed the uh, fair lead uh, from cable to uh, nylon rope. And that's about it. So this bumper is going to get some updates because with bigger tires, the approach angle is kind of bad. So this uh, summer, spring, whatever, we'll be doing some modifications to this bumper. But this bumper is going to stay on this Jeep because it's kind of a... Here, there's no point of uh, rebuilding it or coming up with something else. It already has a bumper. It's already great. I uh, did mention that it does have a Dana 44 out of a Jeep JK. And uh, it is equipped with a one-ton steering. 
and uh, soon we're going to be doing the hydro assist. Right now it's doing it just fine, but because uh, we got bigger tires, you want to put less stress on your steering box and your steering components by adding a hydro assisting ramp that actually helps you push the rod. So the only thing that you're going to be wearing out is going to be the ball joints which um, they're very uh, replaceable and it's uh, one of those uh, maintenance uh, deals anyway. So, but uh, let's go over to the side and I'll show you some of uh, the rock sliders that we built years ago. So as you might have seen in the previous uh, videos, I did build some uh, rock sliders for James's red Jeep. And I was talking about that we used to have rock sliders that were with the higher uh, rail that protected your door. But the problem was when we went through the Rubicon and you smash your uh, rock slider into a rocks a few times, it would interfere with your door. As if you can see right about here, you can't even put a fingernail in between the door and this step here. It's really cool that it protects the rocker, but as soon as you land hard, you can't even open your door. So these are going out from here uh, this uh, spring. Whenever my brother comes back, we'll do, be doing some work. Uh, it does have a quarter panel armor, which you can't kind of see, it's all muddy. We just made it, you know, through a trail here and it's amazing. So he did weld these up himself, even though I know right now they sell fender flares armor like this, but we built it all ourselves, this whole thing. Uh, same thing with the rear quarter panel. It is uh, all made by my brother. He'd been welding for years, so he just built something that he would like to have on his vehicle. And we had to do some trimming after we put 37s because it was coming a bit close, but now with the bump stop, it doesn't come close to the fender. So this, these fenders are just to protect from mud and you can actually step on it when you're trying to get into the roof rack. The roof rack, he built himself as well. And it has a pretty cool feature of a light bar that pops up and uh, basically yeah, works when you need it and then folds down when you don't. So it's a very cool um, feature. I know there's a company starting to come out with this kind of idea. He just took some uh, parts from uh, electric window opening and just made them work and sync, which is, uh, works pretty cool. So there's still need fine tuning on the light and everything, but it works great. The kind of our going name for this Jeep is the Ninja Turtle. When we bought this Jeep, it had this logo on here, except it was faded. We just got this um, replaced because uh, on our previous trip to Barrett Lake, he backed in into a tree and broke his tail uh, tailgate window and the whole tailgate had, had a dent in it. So we got another one, replaced it. So, and we had to put the same uh, Ninja Turtle logo back in here because it's just a whole theme of this Jeep. It's green and it's a slow crawling vehicle. So it's a turtle, but it's a cool Jeep. So it's a Ninja Turtle. And here we have basically basic setup of a trunk with uh, shelving kind of dividing. Uh, he does have his uh, twin cylinder Max's uh, air compressor here with the auxiliary battery next to it. So battery charges via relay from the front battery whenever it needs to. And he just has spare tools here and there, but that's just uh, enough space to put your basic needs. Uh, recovery bag is in here with all the recovery gear and some tools. So basically your basic setup for going out and uh, having fun without uh, any Jeeps. You know, uh, if you're not by yourself or with the group, you always have something to contribute with uh, tools, recovery gear, because everybody has to have at least something. Even though in our group, uh, each vehicle is uh, individualized. Uh, Tanya's is a kitchen. Mine is basically a Rocklander, get through the trail, you know, break the trail and stuff like that. Uh, Sasha's, uh, when he was here, me and him would alternate breaking the trail, especially like on the snow trips. Uh, when my Jeep starts getting hot, we'll tag team, he'll go in front of me and stuff like that. So overall, you know, we're building a group of uh, our vehicles to have each vehicle has specific set of equipment or you know equipped with special things that help out the rest of the team so not everybody's bringing stoves uh you know camping gear and all that so that's uh basically about it inside the jeep is uh, very stock nothing special to it he just has a uh, one of those uh, nice uh, eight pod or 12 pod uh, buttons which very cool because we don't run stereos in our jeeps we don't really care for much for it um it's just uh less 
you know, less space taking up on the dash. You want to have gauges in there, your buttons for all the cool things. So, and now music they have, you know, AirPods if you wanted to listen to music while you're driving. Very really loud without annoying anybody else. That will, uh, I guess, conclude the little walk around of uh, my brother's Jeep, because I know you guys seen it in the background, but nobody ever, uh, you know, gave details on what this thing is. So it's basically a very capable Jeep Cherokee on the uh, trail with a manual transmission, uh, four to one transfer case. So it's an amazing machine. So we're gonna go hit the mountain and have some fun. So then just to show you the capabilities of a manual Jeep on a very steep um, incline, we're gonna be going down one of the steep hills on the hot springs or Carson River hot springs uh, spot without, you know, basically uh, going, you know, pushing brakes or anything like that. So it's very slow. Uh, it can crawl down very slow down the hill. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I hope you figure out where you're going. <laughs> So the tree is level. And we're not. This is where we're going down. Yeah, look look at my pedals. So yeah, look. <laughs> I need to hold on. Are you still crawling, walking down it? We're still walking down. Get get some of the wheels, how they're spinning, how they're slowly spinning. Dude, I am. Dude, I hope I can freaking straddle this thing. Are you gonna straddle it? You're not gonna well, go in it? No, if I'm gonna go in it, we're gonna be on sideways, dude. Yeah, we will. <laughs> this is gnarly, dude. This is brutal. This is brutal. Okay, you this know what? So I'll steep. stop, get out, and. Uh, dude, I can't fill. get out on this. Yeah, you can. It's easier than it's the other way around. Uh, here, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, this is so steep. All right. Okay, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa. Uh, I can't even walk down this. What? Yeah, I'm trying to walk down this, but it's, oh my God. I gotta try to stop. Oh, he's in it. You know, it's a lot easier to ride down in it in that thing than it is to walk down it. This is actually pretty brutal to walk down because it's very loose. Oh my gosh. All right. I feel like I'm going down on my butt. Whoa. I gotta run. I gotta run down it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I wouldn't be taking the tundra down that like, no, no way. That is no way. I think he's coming back down again. Oh, he's coming down this one. And I'm telling you right now, cameras do no justice for how steep that is because that is beyond steep. Hey, this is, this is the point you have to actually give it gas to get down the hill because the transfer case 
and the gearing is so low, you have to give it gas to make it to the bottom. That's how fast you can go down on the, off the hill in the first gear with a 4 to 1 transfer case. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next adventure or on the next walk around.